Hi everyone, James Mackay here from Barbecue.com and welcome back to the second part of the ThermoQ Wi-Fi review. So this is the second part of uh, my review and the first part uh, we unboxed it and got everything set up. Um, I'll stick a link to it up here if you haven't seen it. It'll shoot out here and hit my head any second. Um, so in that video we unboxed it, we had a look at what comes in the kit version. Um, so just to recap, you can buy the ThermoQ unit on its own, I think for £132. Or uh, you can buy then a kit version of it which comes with probes, um, the little rubber boot and then the now famous PP pod. Um, so you can click on that video, I'll not go into any more detail now, but we got it all set up. And this video now we're actually going to put it to use and see how it tracks temperatures, um, how the alarms work on it, what the app's like and uh, if it's any good. So everything's set up on the ThermoQ, there's not a lot you have to do in the unit. Uh, so you just insert both probes into the side, uh, your pit temp probe clips onto the cooking grate, uh, your uh, food probe then obviously is inserted into the food, uh, and just hit the start button, it will automatically connect to your Wi-Fi as long as it's been registered to it. Everything else then is controlled on the app on the phone. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and we'll go in and have a look at uh, how the app works and how you can set up the alarms and things like that. So you can see here, this is the ThermoQ app in the top left hand corner. So if I open that up. Now, whenever you're first connecting to your ThermoQ, it will open up on this screen. Um, so you can see here Thermo Wi-Fi, it's saying connected at the minute, there'll be a little box here that says connect, so you just tap that and your unit will automatically connect up to the app and the phone uh, once you've all originally set up. So once you're finished with that, hit done, and this is your main sensor screen, so this is just a list of your probes. Uh, it tells you their current reading, so food temp 43.6, uh, pit temp 165C. Um, you can see from this screen then with no alarms set at the minute. The maximum and minimum is the the temperatures, the minimum temperature that it's read since you started this cook and the maximum temperature it's read. So um, you can keep track of that but that's not actually anything to do with the alarms, that's just the actual readings it's taken. So at the top of the screen then you'll see a list, uh, an option for graphs here. So you can click on that. And that simply just gives you a little graph version of what was on the previous screen. Um, so you can follow it along as time or see how the temperature is acting. So if we go back out to list um, and into the food temp probe. So again this is just sort of an expanded view of what was already or what it was showing us on the previous screen. Uh, first thing up in the top right hand corner there's the little gear. So that's how you access your settings for the unit. So uh, you can set whether it measures in degrees uh, Celsius or Fahrenheit. Um, the measurement interval, so the ThermoQ Wi-Fi doesn't transmit uh, constantly via Wi-Fi. It sends and receives data at an interval. So you can set that here. So you can set it from 30 seconds, one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes. So if it's a hot and fast cook and the temperature is rising quickly, uh, you might want to set it for 30 seconds so it will update the temperature in your app every 30 seconds. Um, so a normal roasting cooks, I have it set here for one minute which is fine. If it's a low and slow cook you might set it for five minutes. Not sure I would ever want to set it for 10 minute intervals. I don't you know, even on a long cook, I suppose a long cook for sort of 12, 14 hours, 10 minutes might be fine but um, I'm too nervous to let it go like that so I'd go for five minutes maybe on a low and slow. Below that then you have your two sensors where you can rename them and uh, reset your uh, minimum and maximum temperatures for each cook. Uh, advanced info is nothing more than serial numbers and a load of stuff that doesn't help anybody. You can also see then at the very top of this screen, next transmission is 16.49 or 45 seconds to be precise. So. Um, that will change every minute, so that's the next time that the, the temperature is going to update on the app. So we get rid of that, back out to the food temp probe. So if you want to set an alarm, down the bottom right hand corner, there is the alarm setting. 
So for a food alarm, you don't really need a minimum temperature. Hopefully your food isn't getting colder on the barbecue, it should be heating up. So we can just set the high alarm. We are cooking chicken at the minute, so we'll go ahead and set that to 75 degrees Celsius. And hit the arrow down at the bottom, and that will set the the high alarm then so once that chicken reaches an internal temperature of 75 degrees we should get a notification on our phone and again you can see that alarm down here in the left hand corner so you also see here down the bottom left hand corner there's the or beside the alarm button there's the graph button so again that's just a graph version of uh, how your cook's been going so far um, you can change it at the top here to time of day so that'll just tell you the actual time we're cooking or you can go to time elapsed and that'll be from the start of the cook um, and then how long it's gone through. Um, down at the very bottom here then you have save so you can save your cooks once you finish take the food off you can click that save button uh, name them and then go back and look at them so if you want to know how long a certain cook took a certain cook took how long something took to cook you can go back and uh, have a look at it and that'll maybe give you an idea for timings if you're trying to plan an event or something. Um, if you want to uh, clear the graph then you just click new and that's, it pops up then and asks you if you want to save the data or just discard it. So if you're not interested in saving it, just don't. So back out, pit temperature then, back into the same screen again. So we want to go ahead and set an alarm for this. So if you hit on alarm and we'll say we're roasting, so we'll set the high temperature to 200 Celsius. It's ever going to creep up there. And oh. also, whenever you put the 200 in, make sure and hit the tick at the bottom of the screen, or it doesn't change it. And for the low alarm, we'll say 160. Oh, 160 Celsius, and turn it on and hit the tick and that has updated so if it ever drops uh, below that we should get a notification on the phone uh, to say we need to ramp up the temperatures other than that there's probably not a lot to um, a lot else to the app you can keep an eye on it here so I'll let this do its thing I'll come back to them once we get closer to them final temperatures and we should be getting notifications on the phone to say the chicken's ready and we'll see how the alarms act then So there we can see the chicken has reached temperature. Um, I had watched a review before where it had said the initial version of this app, whenever the screen was locked, the alarms didn't go off. Um, so you had to have the screen on at all times uh, for this to work and the app opening open, so it couldn't be running in the background, it wouldn't set the alarms off. Plus you weren't able to change the alarms either. They've obviously updated that since then because you can choose your alarm it goes again they've nearly gone the opposite way once you silence the alarm it just keeps going off every time uh, so it's not even every time the app updates it just keeps going so they've obviously updated that um, hold on I'm gonna put this on silent um, because even with the screen locked the alarm still goes off and um, it would have been nice if it, had, it would wag the screen and let you know what the alarm is but still it's good that it will do it whenever the phone's locked so if you are doing an overnight cook and one of your uh, pet temperature alarms goes off you can uh, it will at least wake you up you can have a nice loud alarm so one other thing I will say is that if anybody has the eye grill out there they'll know that in your notification screen and also on your lock screen it gives you readings for the the probes um, it would be quite a nice feature uh, if you have your phone turned off uh, or out of the app you have to go into it to check your temperatures there's nothing 
that will tell you if you just swipe down, it will give you each, uh, each temperature reading for the probes. So it would be nice to have that as a feature of it, but it's not something they have at the minute, but maybe they'll add it in future editions. Okay, I'm gonna go and lift the chicken off before it's completely overcooked. The final thing is, is the ThermoQ Wi-Fi worth £216 of your hard-earned money? Um, well, if we look at the positives and negatives of it, um, positives-wise, it is a really well-built unit. Uh, the Wi-Fi connectivity on it is really good. Um, I'm working off a Wi-Fi extender. Uh, we have one in the kitchen and that gives us Wi-Fi out in the backyard. So it lost connection once. And I thought, oh, here we go, it's not going to work. Went in and had a look, it turned out it was the actual uh, Wi-Fi extender that had gone funny. So this hasn't skipped the beat. Uh, I've used it a couple of times and the connection's been rock solid on it. The second you turn it on, it connects, so there's no issues that way. Uh, anybody that's used a Bluetooth thermometer knows that you can lose connection to your phone every now and again. So it's nice to be able to actually take your phone anywhere and uh, still have connection. Uh, so even if you have a massive house with a massive yard, it should be fine as long as you have that Wi-Fi connectivity. The whole thing of checking in on 4G, I'm not sure if I would ever set a cook up and then go away to the shops and check the temperatures on the probe. Uh, I'm not sure what I would do about it if I turned the temperature probe on and the temperatures were all over the place because I'm not here to fix it. If it was a, a pit controller, um, something like the Flame Boss where you can actually adjust things up and down, then possibly. But uh, to me, the main thing is having a rock solid connection anywhere in my house whenever I'm cooking. So I don't constantly have to run within 10 meters of a, a Bluetooth thermometer to get connection again. Um, other positives, the probes that come with it are really good. Um, they're sturdy uh, connections. Uh, the nice long meat probe, uh, so again that's all benefits to it. Um, downsides, probably the apps are a bit the only downside I can think of, and not to say everything on it works the way it should work, it does exactly what it should do. Um, them little things I mentioned earlier on about having the temperatures showing in your lock screen and the notifications and things like that, they'd be quite nice, but they're easy add-ons uh, that ETI can make. So price wise £216, uh, it is expensive, there's no doubt about it, however these are expensive. As far as instant read thermometers go, uh, they're probably one of the most expensive out there, but people still buy them. They buy them because they know they work, and they know they're accurate, and they last a long time. So this has a similar build quality, um, as long as the app remains supported I don't see it being an issue. Really, time will tell if this uh, lasts as long as my thermopens have, then to me it's definitely worth the £216. Um, that's it. It's just got nice functionality, it just works, I didn't have to fuss with it too much to set it up. Uh, just turn it on and it goes. So um, You're paying for that build quality and that accuracy, um, so it's up to you really whether you want to spend £216 on that. Bluetooth thermometers are notorious for breaking as well. Generally, the build quality on them isn't quite as good. So, uh, nice strong probes don't seem that they're going to break anytime soon. Good uh, base unit. Everything just seems to work. So, if you have any questions about it, um, feel free to put them into the comments below or send me a message or tag me in a, a tweet or whatever. I'll happily answer them. Uh, this wasn't really a scientific review, I haven't gone into the like, temperature ranges and the construction of it, but um, it's solid, that's all you need to know. And it does uh, the same temperature range really as your thermopen will, so uh, it does everything that most people will need it to do for general barbecue. So any questions, leave them below, I'll happily answer them. Hopefully we'll have a few other reviews on the channel soon, but until then, Hit the like button if you liked the video, uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see future videos and I'll see you in the next episode.
Smash that subscribe button. My dad told me to say that. Okay.